Hey folks, welcome to the game of the day from the first day of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. Uh, for this video, I've chosen the game between Hikaru Nakamura against Fabiano Caruana. This was from round three of the event. Uh, and actually, neither of these players had a particularly good start, but this game just ended up being uh, extremely sharp and very, very interesting right out of the opening. So it starts off as a Rui Lopez, and Fabi plays this move, Knight G E7. Uh, this is already quite, quite rare. This is known as the Cozio defense. A6 is, of course, uh, the most popular move. Knight of 6 to Berlin, also super, super popular these days. Um, but Knight E7, definitely less explored. Um, although definitely known at the top levels. Knight c3 is played by Hikaru, knight to g6, and now h4. Definitely a critical move for this kind of position why he plays an early h4, looking to harass the knight with h5. Here, Caruana plays knight to d4, hitting the bishop on b5. Hikaru drops back, bishop to c4, definitely very logical, and now h5. And now Nakamura does something very, very rational. Again, knight to g5, playing this kind of fried liver type of a, uh, idea against the pawn on f7. Um, and here, d5. And Caruana spent some time on this one, but it is the top choice uh, by the engine, indicating that this is some kind of preparation uh, that he was trying to remember over the board. Because uh, we get into some very, very sharp complications right off the bat. And of course, without this move, um, black is just completely lost. This f7 pawn is very, very important. So d5, Naka takes with the bishop here. According to the computer, knight takes d5 was the better choice. In the game, though, we see bishop takes d5, and here comes bishop to g4 from Caruana, f3, and now knight takes h4. Just absolutely ingenious shot, and definitely the point of uh, black's preparation. Although, based on the time usage, Caruana was spending a lot of time here, so either he didn't remember, he's trying to figure it out, uh, over the board, this is a rapid game, so they start with 25 minutes uh, for the whole game with a 10 second increment. So Fabio was investing a lot of time uh, trying to either remember or figure out what the computer was saying about this position. And now the game here gets extremely messy. Black's point is that the knight on g5 is undefended, and if the queen gets into g5, uh, white's king is going to be extremely vulnerable. So black doesn't care about knight takes f7, then queen to f6. If you take the rook, knight takes g2 is going to come with check, and then the f3 pawn uh, falls as well. You can also take on f3. Black also doesn't care about bishop takes f7, because then king to d7, black's king is safe, but then this knight is going to hang, the g2 pawn is hanging, and once again, white's position is actually kind of collapsing here. Uh, so really, really interesting play. Apparently, white is supposed to take on d5 with the knight, then I think black would probably go knight takes h4 here as well, d3, knight takes g2 is a critical move, king to f1. I don't know how deep the analysis runs. I was looking at some lines here that are pretty interesting. After bishop to g4, White could consider f3 here, but apparently also playable is queen takes g4. So good luck by figuring this out over the board. hg4, rook takes h8, and white has a bunch of compensation because you have knight h7 uh, as a huge threat. Uh, the chess.com engine, which admittedly is not the strongest analysis engine in the world, suggests b5 is like the move for black, and then knight h7, queen h4, and we just have all kinds of uh, insane uh, complications here. Um, so... In the game, it's actually black that gets the initiative, because knight takes h4, this one is hanging. Hikaru plays d3, I think this is the best move, but now bishop to e7, simply latching onto this knight on g5, looking to take twice again, and get the queen to g5, and get it very active. Bishop takes f7, and now king d7 from Fabi, who at this point is entering heavy, heavy time trouble, uh, under 5 minutes here, whereas Hikaru still has uh, 17. King to f8 was the better move. Uh, I'm not sure why black rejected this one, but it turns out the king... Uh, maybe is safer here. Perhaps black wanted to uh, leave the square open for the rook. So we get king to d7. F takes g4. At this point, obviously, both players are out of their book and on their own, and of course, uh, are prone to mistakes. So white takes the bishop. Bishop takes g5. Takes on h5. Black takes on g2. This is all very, very logical. King to f2. And now Fabi misses his chance uh, with a really nice move knight to e3. He plays knight f4, which uh, looks very normal as well, but knight to e3 was a lot stronger, covering the g4 square, not allowing queen to g4. But of course, with this one, you have to see the piece sacrifice, because white can take this knight, and black can take, and after king takes e3, black would have to spot that queen to g5 check, prevents white's king from running away, white king has to go back to the f-file, and now either rook to f8, and black is going to win back the piece, and white's king uh, is extremely weak. The knight on d4 is super strong, and black is totally winning here. 
So this 93 was an ingenious shot that would have given Black a very, very big advantage. Uh, instead, after 93 takes takes, we well, probably have to move the king somewhere. But if king g2, there's queen to g5 check. And king to g3 is uh, safer here, looking for queen to g4. But here, Black can go bishop to f4 check and c6. And Black would have a really, really nice position. The king can run away. The pieces start coming in. And long-term, White's king uh, is going to be a lot more vulnerable. Instead, Caruana goes knight to f4. But this is a huge, huge error because now queen to g4 check, Naka is able to steal the initiative in the position, getting his queen active first. King to d6 is played, bishop takes f4. If black takes with the pawn, then white could play e5 check, and all of white's pieces get into the game. Black's king is now in huge danger. For example, takes, rook e1, uh, and white's pieces come in, and it's going to be mate very, very soon. So black has to take with the bishop here, but now queen takes g7. And white's king does not look that bad anymore, as white's queen is just super active, and white is controlling the position. So c6, rook a g1, now Naka brings all of his pieces in. Rook h6, bishop to b3, b5, 92. Caruana here just down to his last seconds trying to defend, but it's basically a hopeless position. We have uh, opposite color bishops on the board, and black's king is extremely weak, whereas white's king actually is going to be very, very safe here in the center. White's pieces are also much more active, and basically black has no counterplay whatsoever. So takes, takes, king to c5. The king runs, but it can't really hide. To rook to g6 here, Naka takes the sixth rank. And now h6, the h-pawn becomes uh, an incredible asset for white here as well. Rook to d8, bishop d5, nice move using the pin on the 6th rank. King drops back h7. Black, black doesn't have time to take here because of h8 equals queen. And white is just winning the rook with the uh, extra exchange. And then of course uh, rook h7 to follow. So black is not surviving this position uh, for long. So rook h8 was played, but now bishop e6 and queen f7. Very simple, very elegant solution from Nakamura that actually forced resignation here because black has to allow the queen trade. And the point is that after the queens get traded, white is next going to park the bishop on g8. And this is just a completely hopeless construction for black. The rook is now trapped. Uh, white's got an extra pawn and can next just start bringing in the king, bringing in the rook. And yeah, absolutely uh, trivial endgame for white to win with black's rook just caught in the corner like this so Caruana had seen enough and resigned after queen to f7 uh, and yeah very very interesting game extremely uh sharp opening uh, it's not clear how much either player uh knew or how far um but uh it ended up coming down to basically this one moment uh where black chose knight e3 instead of knight f4 this allowed uh white to overtake the initiative and after that it was uh basically uh all over so overall, very, very interesting game. Let us know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Until next time, take care.